Welcome to my build of Fly Me. I've got the plans on the wall here. It's a 800mm wingspan uh, control line trainer, a combat trainer. Now this was designed by Tim Hobbins at Hobbin Hobbies and he also supplied me with the basic kit which, I, which I've got laid out on the table here. And I've just been spending a little, t little bit of time before I start gluing it together to make sure I know exactly where everything goes. Now this is the second video. The first video I got the, I was talking about the actual uh, wing itself, the article uh, that came with it and uh, had a look and saw what we got in the kit that was supplied by Hobby and Hobbies. But in this video now I'm going to start pulling this together but I've just spent some time making sure I know exactly where everything goes. There isn't a detailed uh, instructions with the build, but the plans, which I don't know how well they show up on the camera, they're quite faintly printed. I mean, they're, they're fine for me to use, but I'm just, just on the camera. But the, the plans are really detailed, and you can just work everything out. There's just a few little things, that brain teasers, as to how they go together. So we'll move the camera around now, and I'll just show you what I've got before I start building it. Well, I've laid out all of the components here and I appreciate I just said that I got the basic kit from Hobby Hobbies. This is anything but a basic kit. This is a very comprehensive kit. It has everything you need bar the engine, which we'll get to in a second. We've got the fuel tank, we've got all the nuts and bolts and the lead outs, we've got the bell crank and uh, there is literally everything here bar uh, the glue, more or less. Now, the engine, I've got this uh, this poor diesel. It's a uh, 249 and um, it's a plain bearing one. And uh, I bought it second hand and I've had it running and it runs lovely. So I'm gonna be using that in the front end for the power and that should be lovely. Nice and uh, powerful. On the plans, let's have a look. It says, um, uh, a 2.5 cc or, or, or 19 so this is a little bit smaller but it will be fine I'm sure for this now I've laid everything out and I actually went through and just I don't know whether you can see that wing tip and just labeled everything looking at the plans I've got R2 on there just so that just notice I've got the wing ribs the wrong way around um, just so that I knew where everything went now I got I got a bit excited with this and got ahead of myself and um, I've already I've already glued this together before doing the video and this is the engine mount and we can see the, uh, the pour just fits into that lovely just need to drill the mounting holes it needs a little bit more sanding and I'm going to put some kind of finish on that because I, I don't like the the stripey look from the uh, the laser cutting all of the laser cutting with this looks lovely, looks really nice. So anyway, I, uh, I glued that together using alphatic, uh, uh, alphatic resin and uh, that's nice and dry now. Now, the other thing I need to glue together to laminate before I start pulling this together is the central rib section which provides the support for the bell crank. Now, I just put that together and it has a brace, a plywood brace, top and bottom, which has a cutout for the fuel tank. See here, and the bell crank mounts onto there. But it, you just need to look at the plans and take a little bit of time just to make sure you get this right. It's nicely cut out on the laser printer, and uh, I'll lay that. Yep, yeah, on the laser cutter, and it's got spaces here for the, uh, the plywood to go in. So it's just making sure that's right. So I'm gonna get that now glued up and then I will pin this to my building board, I think. Originally I wasn't going to. There's a little bit of a, a bend in the, in the leading edge and I think the best chance of me trying to get that out, it's, uh, it's, it's already shaped leading edge with a couple of pieces of spruce on the back and the ribs just fit into that quite nicely. But as I said, there's a little bit of bend in this, and the best chance of me getting that out is to 
pin it down when I glue all this. To be honest, the way the wing's constructed, it will probably end up with a little bit of a, a bend in it still. So I'm going to put it so it comes up, so it acts like just a very tiny amount of dihedral. I'm sure that won't make any difference to the build or the flying. So, I will get this laminated now, and then I'm going to get this all laid out, and we'll come back and have a look at that. Right, well, I've got this all set out now nicely, went together very easy nice tight fits on the uh, on the joints which is good and I'm going to CA this in a second I'm going to use my steel blocks just to make sure I've got the ribs upright nice and vertical nice and square and I'm going to be gluing it together with CA what I'm probably going to do is eat, clamp each rib with a little bit of balsa either side so I don't damage the actual uh, the plane itself or the wing itself and I'll probably just clamp that tighten it up very slightly and uh, and CA it because there's a little bit of spring here and if I hold them in place perfectly then I haven't got a free hand but I'll see how that goes something I have noticed I've done I've laminated this central rib uh, thick rib here which is made of two pieces of balsa I think these are 6.4 and a piece of 3mm plywood. Now, uh, looking at the plans as I put this together, I think the plywood is shown, well it is, shown on this outer edge rather than centrally, whereas I've put it centrally. Not sure that makes any difference, um, but we'll, uh, we'll see. And the support here for the bell crank still ends up being in exactly the same place the way it's I've done it so we'll see um, but yeah I think the I think that piece of ply rather than being centrally should have been on, on that face like I say don't think it will make any difference but right I'm gonna get on now and get this glued up the board and it's gone together really well I, I'm really pleased with how it's looking and you know so it should go together well because the laser cutting is really good it's good quality balsa um, so you know there's there's nothing to make it difficult really and you've got all the bits as I've said before now what I've done is I've put on the bell crank you can see that there I mean, it just lifts off at the moment but the reason I did that is because I wanted to line up the holes for the uh, for the lead outs now I've had to elongate some of these hopefully that will show if I move the bell crank round I actually put a ruler on and drew a line on top of the ribs from the hole in the end of the bell crank going out to where it shows the lead outs on the plan which I've now got back on the wall and I just elongated a couple of these holes uh, just to make it just line up nicely. And in the wingtip here, I put in a couple of pieces of plastic tubing that will uh, carry the lines through that wingtip. Now there's a couple of questions I had which I wasn't sure from the article or the plans how to do this. To be honest, it does say on the, on the plans some of it, but I just wanted to check. So I dropped him a message this morning, very early, and he responded almost straight away. Um, very helpful, and, and, uh, and just let me know. Now the, the things I wanted to know was with the lead out tubes, 
Do I actually drill a hole in this wing tip or do I put them top or bottom? And his answer was just drill a hole in the wing tip, a three mil hole and uh, push those in and CA them in. And I've done that and that's worked lovely. So thanks Tim for your, your quick response. The fuel tank I haven't fitted yet. The other question, or one of the other questions I asked him was which way up the fuel tank went because I just wanted to make sure which was the vent and which was the uh, the feed and I guess now I've said that I ought to tell you what he said there's no point in telling saying he told me and then not telling you uh, one of these tubes is slightly thicker than the other the the thicker tube is the feed and the thinner one is the vent vent to the top facing forward feed to the bottom so there we go and what was the other question I asked him um, oh yeah okay the other question was I just wanted to know about the control rod coming out of the back here whether anything that was done to uh, protect the film where it came out or whether it's just a hole and he said to double up the film and to uh, we're using solar text so to do the grey crossways just to give it that little bit of extra strength I wasn't sure whether I should put in a piece of balsa just to um, to protect the hole where it comes out but he said he said not so now we've got this finished the framework oops bell crank's fallen out and I've got it roughly sanded it's still going to need another sand before it's done as you can see I've still got a fuel tank to fit which is a very easy job Oh, and the pod, as it should, just fits on nice and snugly like that. So, um, but that doesn't go on until we've covered it. We cover with the solar text, we cut the solar text, and then epoxy that into place and drill a couple of dowels just to make sure. But I'm going to bring this video to a close now, and I'm just very mindful of time. And so in the next video, I'm going to be fitting the fuel tank, getting the bell crank all coupled up with the lead outs and getting it ready for, uh, for covering and then I will cover it and uh, so in the next video we'll get this thing finished hopefully and then all we've got to do is, uh, is take it out and fly it and I think there's a, a, a fly day coming up with the control line so hopefully it won't be too long before I get to fly this and I'm starting to feel really excited about that day so it will be really nice to to see how this flies and I'm sure it will fly lovely and it seems a very robust wing so hopefully it will put up with some of my uh, some of my dodgy flying so anyway join me for the next video and see how we get on